entrepreneurs, tireless, dogged risk-takers, giving it their all and putting it all on the line. We celebrate our entrepreneurial culture in America, the great entrepreneurs and the great companies that they've built. Indeed, the American dream itself is built on the belief that anyone from anywhere can take forward the next big idea. And let's remember, 250 years ago, America itself was just a startup. And no telling of the American story would be complete without the telling of our great innovators and entrepreneurs. Like Thomas Edison, who didn't just start the General Electric Company, his innovations literally lit up the world. Or Alexander Graham Bell, whose contributions brought us Bell Telephone Company, but more importantly, helped create the connected world that we all enjoy today. Or even the creative spirit of Walt Disney, whose company has entertained families for generations, now for nearly 100 years. And those that have followed in their footsteps, from Mark Zuckerberg to Elon Musk to Steve Jobs. It's breathtaking to think about the impact on society just these few innovators and entrepreneurs have had. So I started my career in technology, helping to build the internet revolution. That gave me a terrific view and an understanding of how the entrepreneurial spirit has the power to change the world. Indeed, I didn't see the internet as a product or a technology. I saw it as a movement that could democratize access to ideas, information, and communication for people everywhere. In fact, those of us working to take the internet to the masses in those early days were animated by two questions. Who haven't we reached? And who isn't in the arena, building the next great innovations and the next great companies that could change the world? And recently, as I've been working in the startup community, I came to realize a few things are true today. We aren't tapping the full potential of innovation and ingenuity in this great nation. Because although we've built a startup culture that's powered our economy and brought jobs and improved lives, we've been building it with one hand tied behind our back. Because the entrepreneurial path that has led to many of these iconic companies that break through has favored just a limited few. Most of them men, and most of them white. But here's the good news. That means there's a powerful opportunity to seize here by simply extending the same benefits to more segments of society. So there's lots of different businesses in America, and in fact, the vast, vast majority of them are small businesses. And many of those small businesses don't actually aspire to become big businesses someday. But that's not the sector I want to talk to you about. The sector I want to talk to you about is what we call the high growth sector. Entrepreneurs who start companies with big ideas and big dreams that they can grow and become successful too. You know some of these companies. Tesla, Whole Foods, Google, Airbnb, and Starbucks. And what do they share in common? They've all been powered by something called venture capital. And in fact, venture capital has become a focus of great study in recent years. Stanford Business School did a study and came out with this to say, venture capital has profoundly changed the US economy. It has become the dominant force in the funding of new innovative companies. So what is venture capital anyway? Well, as its name suggests, it's capital. It's cash infused in a company at a very early stage that can also often be transformative for a young company. But it also brings things like coaching and mentoring and strategic advice, sometimes when it's needed most. And 
it often brings an entrepreneur access into an elite network of powerful people or other successful companies that can be game-changing for a young firm or a new entrepreneur. But if you peel back the onion and say, gosh, so this really looks like jet fuel that powers companies that have the potential to break out. Who's getting this venture capital? In recent years, only 10% of venture capital has gone to companies with a female founder. And if you flip that, that means that 90% has gone to men. And only 1% have gone to companies with an African-American founder. And 75% of all venture capital went to just three states, California, New York, and Massachusetts. So what's going on here? Why are we putting all of our eggs in a small basket? Well, it could be a lot of things, right? Maybe women and people of color aren't actually starting new firms. Maybe there isn't really a performance track record that we can look at and feel good about investment in this segment. And maybe those states between the coasts, maybe successful companies aren't being started there. Well, turns out that the fastest growing segment of entrepreneurs are women. In fact, women-owned firms are growing at a rate 1.5 times faster than the national average. There are more than 9 million women-owned firms in the United States. And African-American-owned firms, they're growing at a rate of 60%, while non-minority firms are growing at a rate of just 9%. Hispanic entrepreneurs have tripled. There's more than two million in the United States right now. So they're definitely out there. So could it be this performance thing? Let's look at some data. If we've looked at women-led organizations, what do we see? They've outperformed the S&P 500 by 3x. And one firm peeled back their portfolio of investments, and they found that the firms with a female founder performs 63% better than firms with all-male founding teams. And Forbes reported racially diverse organizations outperformed by 35%. So they're clearly performing, these segments are, and in some cases, outperforming. OK, so what about those flyover states that don't get much venture capital? What's happening there? There's a growing view that the successful companies are being started in Silicon Valley or just on the coast. But this map of the United States draws out where we find the Fortune 500. And why does that matter? Because any definition of a successful startup is one that makes it to the Fortune 500, the elite 500. And as you can see, these successful companies have been started all over America, many of them between the coasts. So, what is holding us back then? What could it be? There's been a lot of focus lately on something called unconscious bias. And put simply, this is the effect on our decision-making and our perceptions based on our own backgrounds, often unknowingly making decisions based on our own experiences. TechCrunch took a look at this and said, entrepreneurs will be categorized as similar if they have a shared parallel experience with the investor. And they will have a distinct advantage if they do. Now consider that 93% of the investing managers at the leading 100 firms are men. To overcome it, we must recognize that unconscious bias is real. And by the way, isn't it natural that the people in our networks are people similar to us, and the people that we closely relate to and understand are people similar to us. It's only natural. But we must recognize it, and we need to take steps to level the playing field. So that budding entrepreneurs everywhere, no matter their size, their shape, their color, where they come from, or their background, can believe that they can get that jet fuel and maybe build the next great American company. Entrepreneurs like Shazi Visram. Shazi was a child of, of immigrants who came to America when she was young. 
And she found a path that led her to Columbia Business School. And while Shazi was at Columbia, she befriended a bunch of young moms, and she heard a common theme. They were having trouble finding healthy baby food alternatives as the new sort of health focus and organic movement was taking place. So Shazi saw an opportunity. She said, I can solve that problem. And she created a company called Happy Family as founder and CEO. Happy Family has found so much success that Inc. Magazine named it one of the fastest growing companies in the United States two years in a row. And Fast Company called Shazi a rock star of the new economy. This is Steph Spears. Steph is founder and CEO of a company called Solstice. Steph was raised by a single mom on welfare. And through that experience, she watched her mom struggle to pay the monthly bills to make it all work. So when the solar revolution came along, Steph got really excited about its potential to address families like the one she was raised in. So she saw an opportunity. So as she looked at the solar revolution, she was stunned to learn something was true. Tens of millions of households are potentially locked out of the solar revolution, simply because they rent their house, or they're a low-income family, or maybe their house is just positioned in the wrong way. But that fact didn't daunt Steph. In fact, it inspired her. So what did she create through Solstice? These are community solar farms that neighborhoods can share their low-cost access to solar. Think of it as the sharing economy for those who need it most. So really, the question is here, how do we get more Shazis and how do we get more Stephs? Today, I want to propose five new rules that perhaps, if followed, could be game-changing. Rule number one, let's lose the stereotypes that have been holding us back. This is a recent Google search under successful entrepreneurs. Now, it's not really about Google, is it? Because their algorithms just rely on what's out there in pop culture, in media, in movies, and in television. We need to begin to focus on other great entrepreneurs that come from other sectors, like Damon John, like Tory Burch, and yes, like Oprah Winfrey. Rule number two, recognize that unconscious bias is real. It doesn't have to be intentional, but it will play a role if we're not intentional. Which brings us to rule number three, be intentional. Let's really put our efforts into extending the same privileges that have been there for a limited few to many, many new segments of society. Rule number four, diverse entrepreneurs are going to bring us new, diverse kinds of innovations. Think about Steph. If her mom hadn't struggled so much to meet basic bills, she might not have seen the need to address that market. There's an exciting opportunity in our communities if diverse entrepreneurs who see things a little differently come in and mix it up and bring us all kinds of new innovations. And finally, rule number five, be fearless and get in the arena. So no matter who you are, there's a role you can play Help champion the need for entrepreneurship for all. Share the stories and the data that I've shared with you today. Look at your network and ask, do you know some others who can help do more here? And finally, if you're out there and you have a new idea, be fearless. Start your own next great American company. So, these are the faces of founders. They've all started new companies and have big dreams. Their hope is that this is their moment in the American story. From Alexander Graham Bell to Oprah Winfrey to Steve Jobs, American ingenuity has brought us the quality of life we enjoy today. So let's seize this moment together, this powerful opportunity to democratize entrepreneurship, strengthen our economy, and make sure that anyone from anywhere has a fair shot at the American dream. Thank you very much.